Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's having a good day. I've had many, many emails throughout the uh, past few months about learning to troubleshoot radios. And it wasn't until recently where I got an email from a nice young lady that was uh, gotten her ham license and she did a bit of uh, service in the Highway Patrol Department and she sent me a nice email asking about troubleshooting. So I wanted to uh, start a series just on basic radio troubleshooting. Now this would not be for the uh, season tech as everyone that's seasoned should already know all the little tips and tricks about testing radios and troubleshooting to get them back up and running. Now I have two radios here on the bench. This one just came in. It's a realistic HTX 100 that has some problems and this is one I've been working on for a while that I've had some issues with and one of the first things that when it comes to troubleshooting is you know having equipment to work on radios and so forth now you know I have a bench full of different test equipment and this and that and you do not have to have all this stuff a lot of times just a basic Digital multimeter will get you by to get things going. One of the uh, features that works good with a basic multimeter is an RF probe. Now, you know, I can just reach over and grab my Heath Kit RF probe. I put banana ja uh, BNC connectors on just about everything I have. I can pop it on one of these uh, BNC to banana jack plugs, pull out the probes, get the common on the right side, and just plug it right in. Set this thing on AC, and away we go. You know, we have a way, way of testing signals that run through the radio. But a lot of people was not going to be able to just reach over and grab the RF probe because they don't have one. Now in this radio, this Heathkit HW8, an RF probe is required to uh, align this radio. And what we're going to do in this uh, video is show you how to build a couple of types of RF probes. And the first one we're going to be building is just a simple uh, about as basic RF probe as you can build and it is the one that's recommended for the HWH that's even in the manual. Now if we go here and we look at the screenshot of that diagram all we can see is a 4.7 meg resistor a 0 0.001 microfarad capacitor and a geranium diode this could be a 1N34A or anything equivalent. So uh, this side with the cap would be your test point probe. The side with the resistor would go to your voltmeter or your vacuum tube voltmeter. So we're going to build this and then we're going to build another one that's a little more elaborate. So the basic components of the uh, first or a probe we're going to build is just a resistor, capacitor, and a geranium diode. We'll also use this uh, piece of number 14 copper wire as our probe tip. And you can just cut this out of um, electrical wiring, like, you know, for your house or whatever. And when making RF probes, you can use a variety of things for the probe body the second probe that we're going to be building is actually going to be in this piece of one inch aluminum tubing and with a couple of end pieces that I 3d printed and these are simply just uh, 
pot run on the inside of each end and we'll put our probes tip and our coax through uh, the end of these so this one will be a little different um, my regular heap kit probe is just the RF probe this is the PKW-3 probe that's what it is um, you know you'll see some of these that have a switch on it and the switch turns it from an RF probe to an audio probe so they also work real good with signal generators now I do not have a standard heath kit probe that has the switch in it so we'll be making one of those also now again there's a variety of uh, things you can use from a pen to an old uh, magic marker you know the big ones or the small little sharpies and today what we're going to do we're going to build this in an old syringe this is a 10 milliliter syringe and it's about about 5 8 inch in diameter outside but we're going to just build our circuit right on the plunger and then insert it into the uh, body so the tip will come out and we'll have a nice little RF probe for testing and adjusting radio circuits so again like I say we're going to just build this simple probe right in this little trough in the uh, internal plunger and then our probe will come through and stick out the other side like so and we can uh, assemble this and then just slide this back into the housing if you ever had to work on it or fix a uh, solder joint on the cable you know you just simply pull it out and your circuit will be right there so one of the first thing we need to do uh, and then pour the rubber tip off let's go ahead and get us a hole drilled to come up in this trough so we can uh, get our tip in so I'll go ahead and do that off camera and then we'll install our tip Okay, so I went ahead and uh, drilled a hole directly in the center and up into this trough and I pushed it the tip all the way through. You have to get your depth right so that when you install it into the syringe body that you have enough of the tip sticking out, you know. And you know, an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that would be fine. So now when I put the rubber seal on and when it's pushed back in it has a lot of resistance and that's going to hold the whole thing together. It's real simple to do. So the very first component that will go in behind the tip will be our point .001 capacitor and as you can see on the schematic exactly how that would be so what I've done I've cut in here and I've drilled two small holes And we're simply just going to take our capacitor and zoom out just a little bit. And we're going to insert it in these two holes. Now I'll solder this lead to our wire. And I'll go ahead and do that off cam. And we have our capacitor run through, soldered to our probe tip. And now we need to put our 4.7 meg resistor in. So what I'm going to do is just grab the drill again. And I'm going to pop two more holes. Just 
that simple. I'll take our resistor. And we'll get our resistor in here. Now I'll go ahead and get the resistor soldered to the uh, capacitor lead. Okay, the resistor's all soldered in. I went back and I drilled another hole through this side and brought the resistor's leg out into this open trough where there's nothing else in. This will be our main attachment point to go to the center conductor of our coax and what I'm going to do now is drop our geranium diode with the cathode facing towards ground because that's how it is on this particular probe and we'll put it over here and um, then drop it down to ground through this side so we'll have our hot and ground for our coax separated by the uh, syringe body okay so now as you can see this is our center conductor here and I put the diode on the other side with the anode going to the center conductor then I run the cathode of the diode out this way now we'll hook our ground here and I'll send a conductor there and that will give us good strain relief so we won't pull our coax out sorry about not keeping it in shot just want to see just how it's done and we'll go ahead and get our coax on And for this probe, I'm going to use the uh, little small RG174 coax cable. It's a lot smaller and will work real good with this. Alright, so I got my coax separated. And this way we can connect the uh, center conductor to the cathode of the diode and we'll push the ground wire through the other side and uh, connect to the end of the diode and that will be our ground so as you can see just how basic how simple it is to build a simple RF probe it's real easy to do it most of the time you're going to have just about all this stuff laying around anyway if not you can run down to the drugstore and pick up one of these syringes or like I say you know magic marker or whatever and if you do it in a magic marker you can cut you a piece of plastic out drill some holes in it to mount your components on and slide it in or you can just build what's called ugly construction where the components are just soldered to each other and then to the uh, coax cable in the tip and then slide it into your um, pin holder and then you know hot glue works real good for securing all that I'm going to uh, take a little bit of super glue and just uh, glue my probe tip in place so it can't move and I'm going to put just a little dab on the coax back here also and that will give it a little extra strain relief and you know if you use super glue or whatever make sure it's dry before you slide it into your housing so the only other thing we need to do is put our grounding strap on it to clip to the chassis and uh, I think all I'm going to use on this is a little bit of Kimwick. 
it makes good uh, good grounding straps Just cut that off I drilled one more hole here we can slide this up in the hole and then I can uh, solder that to our ground bus and we'll be good to go on that okay now all I got to do is attach an alligator clip to the end of our ground and we can take this and just slide it into our syringe body I took the uh, Dremel and filed me a little tip on the end of it so I can get into a piece of wire or whatever I'll put a uh, BNC connector on this end and we have a simple RF probe ready to go okay now that we have our very simple RF probe all put together and will be ready to be used for future repairs we'll go ahead and show you how to turn this into a switchable RF AF probe You know, like I said, this radio now calls for me to use an RF probe. So, on the bench, I'm going to show you just how to make a simple little RF probe. And what we got here is a small tube of aluminum, about 5 inches long. We have just a plain piece of circuit board. There's a switch, alligator clip, some number... 14 barrel wire, 47k resistor, crystal diode, 1 in 34A, and it calls for a 0 .0068 um, capacitor. I do not have one, but I have two 33s. When you parallel them together, that gives you 0 .0064, which will be close enough bit of coax cable this is an old tip off a cheap pair of uh, test leads for a uh, I think it was like a seven dollar um, voltmeter I bought years ago and you know that <laughs> it was just for some testing purposes and the leads were crap but I saved the uh, the tips off of them and they are screw on and you solder directly into them bit of coaxial cable and I went into Tinkercad and printed these little ends here it's about 23 millimeters on the bottom 26 millimeters around the top of it so uh, they fit nicely into the ends of this tube as you can see So what I'm going to do is drill out the center of one of these and drill this end out a little bigger. I'm going to take this tip and I'm going to solder a piece of this number 14 gauge wire into it. And then slide it in and thread it in so that the wire will stick out the other side. And that will attach to our circuit board. Now you don't have to get this elaborate when doing this. You don't have to make one just like this. You may not have a 3D printer or um, tubing. But you can go down to the hardware store. You can pick you up a couple of uh, magic markers. Pull the cap off the end. Pull the uh, tip out. And snatch the inside out. It leaves it. You know, it's, it's clean inside. You don't, nothing there to have to clean up. Works very well. It will get the job done. You can save the cap to go back on the end when you drill it out to run your coax out of. Or, now this RF probe is going to be an RF AF probe. So there will be a switch in it. Well, you can mount a small toggle switch right here on the end and just run the coax out the side down here. You can pick up some of these at your local 
drugstore and you can actually uh, build a circuit you don't even have to use a circuit board you can just uh, build what we call ugly construction all the parts just soldered in line and take a piece of wire slide it all down in there Um, use some hot glue or epoxy and glue down in place, sharpen into the wire a little bit and when you run your coax out you can use the uh, stopper here just drill a hole through it put it right down here in place and uh, glue it in place and there you go real simple but I've always liked the uh, heat kit style probe so that's why I decided to do this we're not going to uh, etch the circuit board we're just going to use a Dremel to cut out the traces that we need very effective works real good so you can see I got my uh, little circuit board carved out and all I used was just a cut off wheel you know I took my parts I laid them out how they needed to be on the circuit and drew it out on the board how I wanted it to, to work. Now the switch, the only thing the switch does is short the input to the output so that the signal when it comes in from the probe passes straight through to the center conductor of the uh, unit and that's for your audio but when you go for RF you have to have the components in line. Okay, I'll draw you a little diagram of what we're building here. This will be our tip. We'll come here with our .0068 picofarad capacitor. Our geranium diode. And our 47K resistor. And this will go to the center of the uh, probe. The ground will be the shell itself. So when the switch is in this position, it is in the RF mode. When the switch goes forward and connects these two, then it will be in the audio mode. And in audio mode it just goes straight through. In the RF mode, then your signal will pass through these components into the center conductor of your coax. So we'll go ahead and start mounting the components on here. Now, as you can see here on this point, this is where the switch will connect to. So it's basically just a complete loop around the whole outside with a couple of brakes for the uh, components that go in and the brake where the switch is going to be. Okay, so as you can see, that's basically all there is to it. We have a tip in through our 00. 68 picofarad capacitor we'll come here through our crystal diode through our 47k resistor then out to the back so when I check continuity in the RF position should be no continuity because it's going through the the circuit when I switch it to audio we have continuity so that's straight through now I'll get the uh, tip mounted, get this slid into the tube, I'll drill out the hole for the switch and the mounting screws. And there you go, there's all completed RF AF probe. Now what I did was took a piece of flat braid and soldered it here to this ground plane that's in the center. It's not connected to anything else. 
but I left uh, a little bit sticking my soldered it in the middle and this is so that when it slid on this actually can go in between the case and the outer button that goes on the end and that grounds the case so we'll go ahead and slip this together okay I got the uh, circuit board slid in got the uh, switch mounting screws lined up we put the two screws in now all we do is take the little piece that's hanging off and just uh, hug it to the side and we'll slide these two through the in adapter helps if you go back and just tape the end to it now I can remove the tape and now we see our ground is firmly attached and what I'll do I'll drill two little holes on each side and put two little tiny wood screws on each side of the uh, probe body just to hold the ends in place and there you go one AF RF probe and uh, I'm going to put a label on the side of it got our crown clip on And we'll be using this in this uh, series of videos for when we get into actually doing some uh, troubleshooting in circuits. But I just want to show you just how simple it was. I mean, total build time on this was just a shade over 30 minutes. Um, that's not counting printing the uh, in holders. But like I said, there's other things you can use, ballpoint pens, I've seen people use those, the syringes, the magic markers, but it's a simple circuit. And, and if you're pretty handy with uh, SMD stuff, you can use one of these little small syringe, just uh, remove the needle from it. You can pull this out and uh, make your little small circuit board. Uh, it's best to use a double sided board this way you have your positive on one side and your negative on the other and all you have to do is score the board and mount your SMD parts on it slide it in with the tip coming out um, you can do it the same way if we did the uh, the other one cut it off drill your hole through it for your um, cable to come through and uh, make some very nice little small pocket size only a probe so we have this realistic HTX-100 here on the bench that was sent in from a viewer and the story behind this radio is that he took it to a he was a teacher at a college he took it in for a ham radio show and tell left it there overnight forgot about it Went back to later on, picked the radio up. At least it was still there, you know, it wasn't stolen. But <laughs> for some reason, somebody played with it, and the radio now does not work. Now, you could plug the power into this and turn it on and see what it does. But again, you're not sure what's wrong with it. You know, the information I got on it was very limited. Um, someone could have tried to hook it up and hooked it up backwards, blow the reverse polarity uh, circuit out, which that would again, you know, kick your power supply down. If your power supply is rated, you know, for service protecting, be no problem. 
but if you're using a power supply that's not very good you know you can end up doing more damage not only to the radio but to your power supply so first thing we'll do is just go ahead and open up the radio and we'll take a visual of it all right i have the uh covers off had to desolder the speaker to get it out of the way and you know the first thing we're going to do is look at the radio and see if there's anything that's obvious this looks like it's blown you know capacitor blown out or or whatever now being that it was just said that it was left there when he picked it up it would not work we have no idea what is wrong with it and the first thing I want to do is look at this reverse protection diode that's right here in this um, left rear corner and to do that we'll turn it over and you can see the red and black wire from the power jack here going down to the board and we want to make sure that that diode has not been compromised so we'll get our voltmeter here and we'll put it on diode mode and we'll go across these connectors volts drop across the diode so as you can see that diode has not been compromised so it really doesn't look like it was connected backwards or if it was it was on such low current that it did not blow this diode now looking here I'm seeing something else that looks a little strange I can't tell what this is from but you can see this trace here like it's going to an IC that's bare I don't know if somebody has scraped the uh, solder mast off or it got hot or what happened it doesn't look like it was burned off it actually looks like somebody scraped it off I just want to test and see if there's any continuity From one end to the other. And there he is. So, you know, the mystery continues. Now, I will go ahead and tell you from experience there are two things that cause us problems in this radio. One is electrolytic caps. The other problem is that brown glue. And uh, yes, we do have some in here. And it's more on the back. I'll have to get in here and look real good. But yes, there is brown glue. As you can see, it all over the place there. In fact, uh, it looks to me like this jumper here is starting to corrode on that end next to that glue. Now that stuff is just terrible. Because when it, the older it is, the worse it gets. And the more conductive it becomes. So after testing that reverse protection diode, not found any problems there. 
and looking over the radio and don't see anything that's obvious we can go ahead and power it up and see what it does if it does anything I'll go ahead and hook up an external speaker and uh, we'll plug some power into it volume down and we'll go ahead and power up the IFR And you heard it for a moment and the receiver faded right out. settings everything looks okay we'll give the radio a little flex and receive is not coming back So since we did hear audio to start with and then it just gradually all of a sudden faded out it didn't quit it just went to a fade that tells me that something got hot and once it got hot it shut the audio off now I've cut the radio back off and we'll turn it back on Turn the generator back up. And you can hear we do have a tone. So when this happens, the first thing you want to do, we know that our audio out is right over here in this corner. We can come through and start looking through here. But one best piece of test equipment you got is your fingers. Come here and just start feeling around. And I don't know if you can hear, but it just faded out again. Oh, yes. Off it goes. So, just by doing this few tests, what I have found out is that this IC chip, you remember this is the one I told you that had some uh, coating scraped off. Oh yeah, this one back here, that coating is gone. Well, this IC chip is running extremely hot. Now that doesn't mean that the uh, IC chip is bad. I mean, what do you see around it here? Lots of capacitors. So it's a pretty good chance that if the radio was hooked up backwards on some low amperage it could have took one of these capacitors out or damaged one of these capacitors and it's uh, shorting out the output of that IC chip 
And so, you know, again, my biggest thought is that these capacitors somewhere in this audio circuit is, has gone bad. You can see this main cap here, 1,000 microfarad at 25 volts. And you can see all this brown glue around it and running right up underneath this audio transformer. That can cause all kinds of problems that glue has become conductive. So we're looking here at our schematic on our audio output chip because of TDA 1905. We can see our speaker connection here. It comes around, it goes through one electrolytic capacitor. It comes down here to pin one. I can see right across pin one and pin three is C103. This is a 47 microfarad a 16 volt cap that would be the first capacitor that I would think that could cause this to start heating up and go out so looking here at the radio with the back torches we can see IC5 here and this is C103 so I'm going to go ahead and just remove that we'll take a look at it I removed that capacitor and we can see it's a 470 UF and they have a 10 volt capacitor installed. So we're just going to go ahead and check it. I'm going to replace all the caps in this radio anyway. But I just want to give it a check and see what we come up with. Now you see it tried to read the capacitor then all of a sudden it said in circuit leaky with an ESR of 0 0.14 ohms so there seems to be something is wrong with this capacitor so I've installed a new 470 microfarad cap in place of the old one and I've turned the radio on I'm gonna let it sit here and just uh, cook in for a few minutes and monitor it and see if uh, our IC chip gets hot so we'll be back in just a minute okay and it's been running for a few minutes probably about eight or nine and our IC chip is cold as a cucumber no problems so as you can see one little capacitor has caused this problem in the radio Tell you the volume control is scratchy. And I'll turn the uh, Michael Bolts down. And it seems to be receiving just fine. Now it's possible that someone did hook the radio up backwards on a low amperage supply enough where it would not blow the uh, reverse protection diode but it did get this capacitor it's, that is possible this is only a 10 volt capacitor I put a uh, 16 volt back in place but I just wanted to show you that Sometimes troubleshooting is not that much of a mystery as you think it is. It's a lot of just common sense, you know. I found that the best way to troubleshoot a piece of equipment is to find out what is working instead of find out what's not working. Because once you find out everything is working, then you can narrow down the... Uh, components that are not working makes it a little easier so the next thing we know now that receiver's working we'll check the transmitter we'll turn the uh, volume down plug a microphone into it I'll get a transmit indicator we'll look over at the IFR 
and all we want to do is see if we have modulation test one two test one two and we do you can see the uh, spectrum analyzer rising we'll come over here and set it to uh, peak power uh, 15 watts test one two and we're getting plus 15 watts you see the signal light coming on so the transmitter looks real good so the next step in this radio was to go ahead and get all this brown glue removed and replace all the capacitors and she's still running cold no problems whatsoever Well guys, I hope you found this little tips uh, useful. If you did, you know, you can leave your comments down below. You can click on the show more tab to uh, check some other links and stuff out. And uh, we'll be coming up with more videos like this here in the future. Um, I'll try to run many series of, uh, of this episode. So uh, stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.